Okay. All right. We've got a very exciting session for you. Thanks for joining. Uh, my name is Adam Sewell. I am a head of sales here at Density. Uh, really uh, thankful to have your time here. We're going to keep it short and sweet and exciting. Um, we're going to get started and we're going to do something we've never done before. It's going to be a little bit of an experiment. Uh, we're going to take a poll, uh, which you should see popping up uh, in your Zoom here. Um, you know, one of the things that we were curious about is hearing from you about how uh, the current COVID and the, the associated pandemic is uh, impacting your business. So ask you a quick question there. Uh, just let us know. Mainly we want to know is, um, do you have every everyone in your workforce uh, at work in your in your workplace? Do you have some? Do you have just a few select people or do you have no one in your in your workplace? Uh, so please answer that poll. We'll kind of use that as kind of uh, some discussion uh, towards the end here when we do Q&A. Uh, but really, again, thank you for taking time out of your day to be with us. Uh, we'll give you a quick introduction to density. Uh, really, you know, the, the, the intent of this webinar is to give you context in terms of density's technology, uh, how it's being applied specifically uh, today, uh, as well as in the future. Um, I'll give you a quick product demonstration of Dashboard, which is our, uh, our uh, web application. Uh, it shows you the data and some of the analytics and, and um, other pieces of, of the platform. And then we'll get to some Q&A. So if you do have a question, please feel free to en en enter it answer it uh, answer your own questions that's what we'll do no please enter it in the q a box uh there at the bottom of your screen and we'll, we'll pick them up uh, throughout the webinar as well as as well as as at the end um as you can see i need a second cup of coffee here this morning okay so uh you all are here to kind of learn about our sensor platform uh, we make a people counting sensor uh, it goes above a point of entry you can see there on the right and what this sensor does all around the world, we've got these deployed in many different countries. They're counting people in and out of space in real time without invading privacy. And that last piece we'll talk about quite a bit here. Um, uh, you know, density is specifically, specifically designed to not capture personally identifiable information such as age, race, ethnicity. Um, uh, it's really, uh, uh, privacy is a, a core component and kind of a core philosophy here at density. And it's enabled us to be deployed in areas where Customers, employees, other occupants have reasonable expectations of privacy um, while generating data that can help improve how you run your, your, your workforce and your operation. So this is the, the, the people counter, but uh, to be completely honest, uh, most of our customers are most interested in the data and the insights that the sensor generates. So the, there's a lot of technology that goes into the sensor itself, which we'll talk about. Uh, we could talk for hours about all the components and all the technology underlying the sensor, but really at the end of the day, it's the data that enables uh, enables uh, companies to, 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 to be better effectively um, and protect the people better as well. So uh, we pair the sensor with our software platform. Um, we generate accurate real-time data that gives you a clear sense of how many people are in your space uh, in real time as well as over time. And we'll talk about some of the applications of, of, of this data. Uh, as you can see on the right, it's just a quick GIF uh, of the, the platform, uh, the, the web application dashboard, which we'll show you today. We also support iOS and Android native mobile applications. And we do have a web API uh, where many of our customers integrate this data into other IWMS systems uh, or other systems that are used to, uh, to, to, um, to run their operation. Okay, so sensors plus software equals density. Um, we'll talk briefly, you know, one of the things that has changed for our business uh, is uh, interest among our customers in displaying this data to the occupant, so the person who is actually in a space. Uh, amid COVID, there are obviously uh, uh, concerns around social distancing, around risks of transmission being indoors and unventilated places, and just everyone has a new sense of kind of their own personal space. And so one of the things that we've done over the past several months is give customers and uh, companies the ability to display occupancy data to their occupants in their, in their actual locations, whether that's on a mobile application or a mobile phone, or uh, in this case, on a digital signage uh, or, or digital display here. So if for those of you who either have employees at uh, their, the, work for, the workplace today, or you're looking to bring those employees back into the uh, in, in office environment, Imagine walking into that space and getting uh, visual cues such as this saying, yep, okay, the, the, the second floor is uh, in a safe capacity. You can go on up and grab your cup of coffee or start work. Um, we're also working with uh, many com companies around uh, safe protocols for restrooms. 
uh, across the board, we're seeing uh, customers wanting to reduce the occupancy of their spaces for, for obvious reasons, giving uh, their employees or their customers more physical space to distance. Um, and with density, and we'll show you this in the, in the dashboard demo, you can set a specific target capacity for all of your spaces. So let's say in this specific example, these restrooms have 10 stalls. Uh, Pre-COVID, you could have 10 people in there, no problem. Uh, Post-COVID, you want to reduce that maybe to two or three. Uh, with Density, you'd be able to set that target capacity. Um, and then on the display outside of the space, indicate whether uh, there are you know, uh, fewer than those three people in the space now, or whether it's at three or higher and people should wait and not enter the space and compound the problem of kind of safety and social distancing. Um, you know, uh, we're working in many uh, office environments as uh, work, work, workplace teams and real estate teams look to bring people back into those environments. We also work with a lot of um, companies uh, and employees who don't have the luxury of working remotely or working from home. So uh, companies in the logistics and um, warehousing spaces, uh, essential services and retail, retail providers such as grocers and other, other places. We're providing um, this data allows uh, both their staff as well as their customers to have a, a stronger sense of uh, personal safety while they're in an environment um, and, and keeping those, those spaces uh, safer from a, from a public health standpoint. So at a high level, you know, there, there are a number of, number of different applications for the data. We just, I, I kind of previewed the health and safety uh, application because that is front of mind for, for many folks. Um, we do have uh, some other use cases. So uh, in the corporate office environment, um, our data can be used to understand how space is used and optimize decisions around square footage assumptions, uh, different types of space uh, configurations and other things. And so especially for that uh, group of corporate office uh, workplace teams that they're bringing, bringing people back into a workplace environment, you know, there's no understanding of how the space will actually be used following, following an, an event such as COVID. Um, you may have more people working from home, uh, and so density can provide data to help inform those decisions. So you're actually making decisions that, that make sense for your business and are also not only healthy, but also cost, cost effective. Um, and then lastly, we do have a physical security application uh, where our sensor is in real time counting the number of people entering uh, a secure space. We can compare that accurate count with the number of badge swipes and detect when uh, someone is entering a secure space without swiping their badge, which is called tailgating. Um, and we can talk a bit about that, but we're going to keep the demo mostly focused on these two other use cases. Um, so we've got a couple results are in. So let's just pause and talk about that. It's going to be super, super exciting. Um, so we've got, um, let's see, we've got most, uh, we got 50% of respondents saying that 100% of their employees are remote, meaning they're working from home or, or not in the office. Uh, we've got about a third of uh, respondents are saying fewer than 10% are coming into coming into work, um, meaning they probably have some IT or operations staff, security staff, which are coming in, uh, I, I would imagine. Um, we've got about 10% uh, who have some or uh, uh, most of the people in, uh, in, in the workplace. So about 20% have some or most, uh, most people in the environment. So we've got a good mix. And I think when we get to the Q&A section, I would love to hear uh, from, from these different stakeholders about what you all are kind of experiencing and, and how you might make use of um, um, similar data such as density. Um, so uh, before we get into the demo, it is worth kind of talking about some of the technology behind, uh, behind the density platform. Um, I actually, so I joined density from a camera company. And when I first joined, it wasn't fully, I didn't fully appreciate some of the complexity of the challenges that density solves. Um, that's, a, that's a weird way of putting it, but let me, let me try again. Uh, what I what what you don't immediately recognize is that um, it's a it's kind of a hard set of challenges underlying uh, counting people, and so what we're showing you here is a few examples of kind of um, the variance in behavior that occurs in a space. So even this first image on the left, where the person kind of opens the door and comes back in, you can see this person's head; they just kind of linger. So that lingering, you know. How do you count that person? Are they in the lobby or are they in the conference room in that particular example, right? Um, so that's just one example. People walk in in different directions and in, in high volumes. Uh, people carrying objects or bringing bags and bikes and carts and other things into, in and out of spaces. Um, uh, you know, lingering in that doorway. And then in some cases, you know, we always like to show this. Sometimes they're not people, they're a dog or some other, some other object. Um, 
the point here is that there's a there's a large variance in human behavior and if you want to do uh, accurate real-time and anonymous counting of individuals things like cameras brake beam sensors stereoscopic vision um, there's a there's a host of other uh, wa you know wi-fi or mac address tracking there's a whole set of other technologies that, that attempt to do this, but they, they, they kind of fail in one of those three, one or more of those three categories. So accurate, anonymous, or real time. And then the last thing I'll say is, um, <laughs> lately I've been talking about data integrity, which is, you know, it's kind of an abstract concept. Um, but as we'll go through the platform here, you know, density, the sensors are designed to work as a network, right? And so they go over a point of entry. So let's just say you had a floor. Uh, that had an elevator bank and uh, a stairwell. You'd have a density sensor over both of those points of entry. And let's say you have 10 people get off the elevator and five people leave via the stairwell. You're gonna see plus 10 minus five. And so you'd see five people on that floor plate at that one time. And by data integrity, what I mean is um, you're not getting a general count of people. You're not getting kind of like a heat map of, hey, people are kind of over here, they're kind of over here. Uh, which you might get with a, a, a MAC address or Wi-Fi tracking. Um, when we get into the demo, I'll show you how you can define specific spaces. And uh, the hierarchy of those spaces have, has very high integrity, meaning if someone walks onto a floor and then goes into a room, density can say that person is in, the, in that one room, but we also know that they're on that floor. And I, I know this is getting out there in the ether a little bit, but it should make sense as we kind of go through the next few slides. Um, so this is kind of what the, the, the sensor is kind of seen, quote unquote, but it's not seen, it's measuring depth. So on the left, what you're seeing, um, what, what's visualized here is a, a depth render or a depth measurements of the scene below the sensor. Uh, it's at 30 frames a second. And then on the right, what you're seeing is uh, the, the raw data that's been processed by our set of algorithms. Um, and you can see what the algorithms are trained to do is ignore all non-human behavior and just focus on uh, those heads and shoulders coming in, in and out of these spaces. And so the sensor is actively processing this data on the, on the sensor itself. Um, and it's sending a very simple piece of data to our cloud service. So um, under normal operating conditions, all that's sent is to the, to the cloud is a timestamp. So, and you can see that on the left here, whether the event was an entrance or an exit, and then the location of where that took place. Um, I'm not gonna lie, if you look at one door, the data set's like pretty boring, but as you scale up across different spaces and different space types, whether it's like a floor, a building, multiple buildings, an entire portfolio, this data set becomes incredibly rich and valuable in making decisions about keeping people safe, about optimizing uh, you know, your, your OPEX, your CAPEX investments in terms of your real estate or your, your, the buildings that you operate, as well as um, uh, preventing tailgating. Um, you know, really quickly, um, you know, maybe I'll pause there. No, we'll just get through this and then we'll, we'll take a couple questions. Um, just really quickly, don't want to bore you. You know, uh, our background as a company is pretty interesting. We were founded in 2014. Uh, there were a number of years of research and development that went into the company uh, to get to where we are today. Uh, we tried to use commodity type products like cameras and stereoscopic vision. Uh, and we realized that to be anonymous, real time and accurate, we had to build something from scratch. Um, that's, that's, that, that is the purpose of that R&D phase of the business. Um, and today we're really focused on uh, improving the cost efficiency as well as the safety and security of our customers' buildings and real estate. Uh, I am uh, taking this webinar uh, with you today from San Francisco, uh, from my kitchen table. Uh, that's where we're headquartered. Uh, we have an office location in New York City, and then we do have uh, a factory uh, in Syracuse, New York. And interestingly, in our case, we have select individuals uh, from our workforce in the factory location to make sure that we're continuing to make product. Um, all of the people who, uh, like myself, who work on the, the business side of the, the company, we're all working from home, but we do have staff uh, going in on a regular basis. That's where that image is taken uh, to, make our, to make our product manufactured here in the US. Um, we work with a range of different customers across various um, verticals. Uh, really focused on, um, again, helping these, these entities understand how their space is used so they can improve safety uh, and, and improve cost efficiency. Um, but with that, we'll, we'll, um, we'll pause here just really briefly. We'll take a couple quick questions and then we'll get into a demo. Um, so question uh, one from an anonymous person that says, is Safe by Density a separate module of service? Uh, does the API allow us to create custom digital displays using the same technology? 
Um, so great question. Safe by density is included as part of our core service. Um, and that's, that's one of the benefits of going with like a density type model, which is uh, as we release new features and functionality, we're just going to open those up to, to existing customers. So when we launched that product in early April, I believe, um, all of our existing customers got access to that new feature set uh, without additional fees or license uh, license charges or anything like that. Um, and in terms of the API, uh, yes, our standard our standard software package includes uh, access for for the API. And so, if you wanted to take that API and put that into a, either a third party application or create a digital display of your own, uh, that would be included in, included in the cost of service uh, for you. Um, Den Denise De La, De La Fuente asks, uh, can software connect to in-house apps? Um, yes, absolutely. We can talk a little bit about that when you get into the demo. Uh, we support a number of kind of out-of-the-box integrations, which I can touch on. And then uh, for you know uh, another application that we don't integrate with, uh, we can give uh, that software team our API documentation and they can uh, write that integration for them. Um, for what uh, what you, what what the use case would be, Denise, I would I would love to hear um, maybe if you can enter that uh, like what application uh, or applications you're you're interested in, um, and then Barry has a great question: How much space is needed between people to get accurate count? That is a very good question. Um, we have had there's been numerous instances where we've done uh, you know back back in the day when we had uh, you know people in an office and we had customers come visit us. Uh, we would do, you know, in-person demos and, and there'd be lots of um, cases where people would try to trick the sensor by, you know, walking very closely together. Um, and really, you know, but you can be touching the other person, which I don't recommend in today's environment, but you can literally be walking right as kind of one person and the sensor will catch you. Um, I will make one note on accuracy before we get into the demo. Um, we're very transparent about accuracy. When we report on the accuracy of our sensors, we report on what we're actually seeing in the field, not some lab test. So uh, a lot of other providers will, you know, they'll, they'll do a lab test. They'll take like the high or, or, or like third watermark, uh, like one of the higher watermarks in that lab test and say, yep, our sensor is 99.5% accurate. Challenge is when you get that sensor into the field, you're likely to see lower accuracy than what the lab test high watermark is. Um, so when we report on accuracy, we see anywhere from 96% accuracy all the way. We do have sensors in the field that are 100% accurate. Um, and as part of the onboarding process, we talk, we talk through what accuracy means and why it's important um, to, to, to you all. Um, the, the second point on accuracy that I will mention is those algorithms that we have running on the device, um, those are continually being kind of retrained and updated. And so part of the density service includes this software and firmware upgrade. And so over time, uh, as sensors gather more data in your environment uh, and are retrained and trained, um, generally we see accuracy increase over time. Um, that's not to say that it's perfect. We would never say that the sensor is 100% accurate. No sensor is 100% accurate. But our kind of commitment to our customers is that we'll always be transparent about it. OK, we're at 20 minutes, so I don't want to bore you too much uh, more with kind of slides and stuff. Let's get to the product presentation here. So I'm gonna reshare my screen. All right, is everyone able to see my screen? I'm gonna just assume yes, since everyone's on mute. Um, okay, so this is Dashboard. This is our web application. This is one view into the data that, that Density is generating. Uh, it's a demo environment, so um, it's, it's, we don't actually have people in spaces to this degree uh, at this time. Uh, you can see I've already, I've already logged in here. Uh, we support single sign-on providers like Okta, Google Apps, and others. Um, so if your organization uses something like that for identity management, it's easy to set up. Uh, but I'll, t I'll come back to spaces here, but just a couple quick notes. Spaces is kind of where you would go uh, to organize your, your different locations, your different space types. Um, and you can see that they're hierarchical. So on the left here, you can see that I've got a couple different uh, campuses in my corporate. This is a corporate office setting. We obviously, depending on what your business is, it would, it would be different. Um, you can see I've got this Ames, Iowa location, and all of these are nested. And so I can go from the HQ to the first floor down to the second floor and see all of the different spaces where, where we have density deployed. And we're going to talk specifically right here about this cafe. So we're going to come back to spaces, but I do want to show you the safe display first. Um, all you need to know about the cafe for right now is that there's a, a legal capacity of 600, which is typically dictated by fire code and a target capacity of 440. And this is all configurable 
uh, by you, depending on uh, what your requirements are. And so most of our customers right now are targeting 20 to 25% occupancy load um, now compared to pre-COVID, uh, although that will change as, as things become uh, more normal and, and we kind of get back to business in a more normalized fashion. So anyways, let's uh, jump over here. I'm gonna jump over and show you how we can configure that digital sign to post outside of this cafe to say, hey, all clear, there's not, not, there's not very many people in the cafe, come on in versus, okay, we're kind of at capacity. Let's, um, let's press pause. So I'm gonna click over here to safe display. Um, and what, what we'll load here is uh, you'll see all of the different spaces for which we've configured those, uh, that digital sign. And so you can see here, here's my all-star cafe display. Um, you can say we created this uh, back in June. We've got a capacity of 300 people that we're targeting. And just with a couple clicks, what you can do is pull up this, um, this URL that will post uh, kind of the green, the, the green go or red wait message. Um, you can upload your logo here and make some configurations there if you want to kind of lightly brand it. Uh, and I'll call it two things here. Um, you can either show the, the number of occupants detected in the space, or you can do a percentage. Um, we typically recommend uh, folks go with a percentage. It it's, it's communicates the same information and is, is a little bit more useful. Um, and then we do do a kind of estimated wait time. And what, this, what the system is doing, again, this could be across one entrance or multiple entrances, is it's counting those entrances and exits in real time. Uh, and it's comparing the exit rate to the number of people in this space and, and calculating kind of a wait time. So when is the next time that some, what, what, when's the estimated time that the next person will be able to enter if it's over capacity? Um, and I'm gonna click into one more and just maybe we can get one that's uh, currently over capacity. This one looks like it's green. Um, a couple quick notes, we do support um, a black and white versions. Uh, so we work with um, a number of uh, display providers who do like peel and stick uh, displays. Uh, Joan is one of them. Uh, that support black and white uh, and here here's one we can see that okay this this is over over capacity we haven't set a um, configured this particular space to do the estimated uh, uh, wait time but this is just an example of what a weight weight display would look like pretty straightforward pretty easy uh, very easy to configure and and, and very scalable um, so we'll, let's go back to spaces real quick we'll, we'll make it, we'll show you a couple things here um, the the piece that is so let me rewind here. Uh, displaying data to the end occupant, whether it's a customer or an employee or, or other people, gives, peop gives them the information they need to, to make being safe convenient. So uh, whether it's, hey, I wanna check uh, a space busyness on my phone before I drive across town or walk across campus or go up to the 10th floor to see if it's busy and be able to subscribe to alerts, or when you get to a location to be able to understand, okay, the place is over capacity, I, I, I'm gonna wait or I'm not gonna go in. Um, that's empowering individuals to make decisions that make sense for their own personal sens sensitivities around their own health. Um, from an operational standpoint, we also support data and insights that can help, uh, help your business team or your operations team or your facilities team take action in the case that a space becomes full. And so one of the ways that we do that is through alerting and so what you can do in the same concept here, setting the target capacity uh, or, or a, a threshold that you don't want to have cross, uh, it's very easy to set up a very quick uh, text message or email alert saying, you know what, when this space is getting to, you know, let's say 290, when it's approaching that threshold, I want to be notified. And we're going to put in place a protocol by which, hey, if something's, um, you know, if a space is appro approaching its uh, an unsafe capacity, we're going to send a security person down or we're going to send a facilities management person down and just check out the check out what's going on. Um, you can also set it, you know, say like remind me every 30 minutes if it's still over that capacity. And if it increases by another 10 people, I want to escalate this. And so there's a there's a display component showing end occupants uh, data. There's an alerting component, which is what do you do? Uh, how do you know when a space is appro approaching or exceeding its intended capacity? Uh, and then I will show you here, there's an analytics component, which is how do you compare your different space types against how they're performing relative to, to occupancy. Um, so we'll get to that last portion here in a second. Um, I'm gonna take a couple quick questions uh, and then show you a few more things. I'm, we're trying to keep this right at 30 minutes because if we do know that your, um, your, uh, your time is valuable here. Um, so Barry has another question. Um, for multi-floor buildings with multiple entry and exit points, um, how granular is the tracking and reporting? Great question. 
it, it really depends on um, the number of sensors and, and, and what granularity you, you deploy at. So, and let's just take a couple quick examples here. So on the left here, you know, in Dallas, we've got two buildings. You can see that uh, in some of these, we just have a few spaces. So we've got, you know, some neighborhoods, which is like open seating. Uh, we've got some conference rooms. Uh, it really depends. If you only deployed at the conference rooms, you would just see conference room A, B, and C. Um, if you only deployed at the floor level, you would just see, you know, every single floor. Um, and if you just deployed at the building level, let's just take a simple example. If you had one building with one entrance and one sensor, you would just see how many people are in that one building. Um, and so what we're seeing with our customers is there's lots of interest in building and floor level occupancy, giving people an understanding of where they can go within a building. Uh, there's lots of interest in common areas, whether that's bathrooms, uh, you know, mini kitchens, other spaces where people congregate. Um, you know, gyms, people are coming back into gyms and they want this data. They want to be notified when spaces are quiet and safe. Um, and then, uh, you know, there's also interest in some, some room based. We're seeing a lot. People are not bringing people back in a conference room at this stage, but that's certainly on the horizon. Um, I'll show you a couple more quick things here. Um, and the, the demo is a bit unstructured now at this point, but hopefully this is making sense. So I'm gonna go back up to Ames HQ and we'll go back to uh, the cafe here um, to get some data. So uh, right here, this is the live streaming data. Uh, so you can see the blue dots here are entrances and the gray dots are exits. And again, this could be across one or multiple entrances. The, the sensors are working as a network to understand occupancy. And you can see uh, um, entrances minus exits equals occupancy. And then gives you that 15% full. So this is, this is happening in seven tenths of a second. And this is one of the benefits of processing data um, on what's referred to as, as the edge. So processing the data on the actual device and then pushing it up to our cloud service enables us to bring that latency down to, to less than a second. Um, you can segment on kind of whole day versus working hours. And again, I'll just show you that peak occupancy so you can get a sense of, you know, I showed you the alerting off occupancy, but you can also start to get a sense of when this space is its busiest, how busy is it? And how many people are entering this space and you can see you know in a couple of cases we've kind of gone over this target capacity of 440 and we would want to go take a look at that okay one more thing and then we'll get to questions so um that's uh we showed you display we kind of touched on spaces and alerting and then the last component here is analytics and i won't spend too much there's a lot here and i don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole um, but let's just come in here and uh, take a look at a couple of things. This is a very flexible reporting and analytics tool. This is kind of, think of this as where you would go to really, hey, I want to understand how all of my, um, you know, how all my conference rooms are performing or all, how, how are all the bathrooms being occupied? Um, how are we doing on floor level occupancy? You're able to come in here and compare different space types across your, your operation or your floor plates um, to understand how, how the space is being used. And um, beyond the near-term benefit of keeping your, your people safe amid COVID, uh, many teams are looking at this data set as something that they can use in the months and years ahead as they kind of reconfigure their, their workforce and their operation, whether it's a corporate office, whether it's a warehouse, um, you know, what are the space requirements? Um, many, many companies are expecting to have more square footage in one way, um, but, but potentially less square footage if they have more people working from home more permanently. Um, so I'll just give you one quick example. So we're gonna go through and talk about um, these two different neighborhoods, which in density is typically like an, an area of open seating, which we can support by putting sensors uh, strategically around that open seating area to understand how many people are coming into that space. Uh, so I'm gonna look at the last, I'll just show you real quick, I'm gonna look at the last 30 days. Um, and as I go through this, you, you get a sense of kind of how intuitive and fast this, this reporting tool is. Uh, I'm only going to look at business hours. So I'm going to look at like 6 a.m. to maybe 6 uh, 6 p.m. And I'm not going to look at weekends because you know that's not interesting to me. Um, and you can see this is by hour. Let's change this to day. Actually, you know what? I like the hour better. So let's go back to hour. Okay, so you can get a sense of like, okay, it's pretty pretty standard here. You see people come in in the mornings. This is pre-COVID, of course. Uh, then they go out for lunch. They kind of come back. Um, Let's look at occupancy. So if you look at occupancy, which is just the, the raw numbers of people, you can see that we've got about the same number of people coming into this space uh, throughout a given day. Um, now, if we look at utilization, which is uh, the number of people or occupancy divided into the capacity, you can see that actually the sales organization 
surprise, surprise, is not doing a good job of using this space. So this space is on our is is at peak only 50% utilized, and on average, it's only a third utilized. Now, this is a perfect piece of data, and we've talked to so many different teams where you know a lot of these decisions historically have been made by like squeaky wheel gets the grease or kind of rules of thumb. Density gives data to decision makers so they can say, you know what, sales team, you're not in the office nearly as much. Um, we're going to reduce your square foot. We might give it to marketing, although marketing looks like it's pretty right size right now. Um, real estate is a very, uh, very valuable asset, and these types of these types of decisions can unlock significant amounts of value for your organization over the long term. Um, you can also use this data set to compare. You know, if you had hot spots uh, where you had problem locations that were like regularly going over that intended capacity, you could kind of run that analysis. You can save this, you can download it, you can push this out to your organization and kind of make decisions on what you want to do from an operational uh, operational standpoint. Um, the last thing I will mention around this data set is we're seeing increased demand and interest for usage-based cleaning, which means, um, you know, again, it's one of those things that's obvious, but no one really, uh, you know, before I joined Dense, I never thought about, but now I think about it on a daily basis. You know, we clean spaces all the time that aren't dirty or don't need to be cleaned. Uh, especially in the corporate office setting. Uh, and that's because we clean on a schedule and it's typically in a contract that says this space must be cleaned once once or twice a day. Um, using data, especially as companies start looking at doing uh, increased cleaning uh, frequency and, and depth uh, to be able to focus those efforts on spaces that are used most frequently based on occupancy rather than a time-based schedule. Um, in some cases, we're seeing uh, you know 20, 20 to 30% savings in terms of cost efficiency for that. At, uh, for that particular service is that. Um, and so you can do, it's a combination of reporting and alerts that kind of uh, work for that, uh, which is, hey, let me know when the space has been, this bathroom's been visited 20 times, uh, and let me know when that bathroom is quiet. Go clean that bathroom is kind of the use case. Um, I've talked a lot, I would love to hear from you. I'm sorry, there is definitely more in the demo, but um, we're kind of over the 30 minutes, so we'll, we'll get to some of these questions, I guess. Um, I hope everyone's found this uh, helpful and useful so far. Um, all right, uh, Barry has another question. Do local regulators generally accept your data's confirmation and compliance with occupancy level uh, during a health department audit? Um, generally, we've seen very positive feedback. I think w the way I would categorize it is a great question. Um, you know, we've, communities have been dealing with COVID for a number of months now, so it feels like a long time, but relative to things like uh, government regulations and other things, it's still relatively new. Um, I will say that um, we have worked with both federal and uh, state and municipal uh, entities in recent months, and the feedback has been very positive. Um, we are not like on a, a list of like, you must buy this technology um, yet, but we are in conversations with with those uh, those groups now. Um, another question, kind of what, what were the downfalls to create the 96% accuracy? That's a great question. So, um, you know, a number of things can impact accuracy. Um, umbrellas, we, you know, if, if someone walks in with an umbrella, we won't count that person. Um, there are some environmental factors. Uh, direct sunlight, in some cases, can impact accuracy because we're using uh, infrared light. Generally, though, what we're able to do is, um, you know, push down a new configuration or new algorithm set for a sensor. Uh, and what I would also say is we have a a great customer success team and great set of partners. And typically as part of like a, a rollout, um, you know, we do a site walk and a site assessment and can guide you down a right way where you're gonna be able to get a very accurate uh, system from, from day one. Um, but that's a, that's a really good question. Um, all right, uh, how long does it take to generally be up and running with density? What factors impact the schedule? What expedites and what delays? Fantastic question. So. What I would say is that generally the, the main rate limiter is typically um, on the client side, uh, you know, getting approvals, uh, the sensors do need their, their power over the ethernet sensors, they do need connectivity. So getting sign off from your IT or security team. Uh, so typically on the client side, there's some things that we go through that limit the, the, the speed of the deployment. Um, from our perspective, you know, currently we do not have any shipping delays for the product. Um, you know, we have seen a lot of demand in recent months uh, and, and going into the second half of the year, we might see, might see some small shipping delays, but right now we don't, we don't have any. Um, we can ship units, we have partners who can, you know, uh, come on site, do a site visit and kind of get deployment up and running, you know, depending on the size, but 
you know, we can do floor level stuff in a matter of hours. If you're doing like a big rollout with, you know, hundreds or thousands of sensors, that's obviously a longer, a longer time period. Um, but, you know, I would say rough rule of thumb, if you told us go, we could probably get you live within a, a week or two um, currently. Um, Eric has a question with the occupancy max threshold in place. Um, is there a way to restrict access to a building uh, with an access control? That is a, that's a good question. We've gotten, we've gotten that a number of times. Um, it's come up. Um, we are looking at enabling that with some of our access control uh, vendors. Um, what I would say, Eric, is if, if that's something you have, like a project that you want to do right now, let us know. And um, something we could certainly look at. Um, but Eric's point there is like, hey, a space is 110% of its capacity. We're going to lock the doors from, we're going to prevent people literally from coming in. And um, we have seen more interest in kind of a softer approach, which is just display and then sending someone down to, to investigate. But the access control component um, is certainly, um, certainly, uh, certainly a good one. Um, a uh, question from Balaji, uh, does it support different geolocation offices in a single dashboard? Yep, absolutely. So the, the whole idea of dashboard is um, it's created to, to really manage at scale, right? And so it's your single point of reference for understanding all of your different spaces. And so if you had, uh, you know, offices in international locations or across the country here in the U.S., you'd be able to kind of easily scale and manage that from a single platform. Um, Bill has a question, how much space will a sensor cover? Uh, we have very wide entrance. Great question. So the, the standard, this, the one sensor is really designed to cover uh, what would be kind of described as the standard double doorway. So about seven and a half feet uh, wide. In cases where you do have a wider entrance, the sensors, we can pair two or three sensors together, which is called, uh, our team calls it a multi-point install. And so, Bill, if you do have a wide entrance, just um, you know, follow up with us. I'd be happy to. Uh, so, typically, we can kind of take a look at your your situation and go through it, uh, give you a recommendation of what how it would be supported. Um, so that's a, that's a really good question. Um, Anonymous has a question: uh, How do you think usage of the tool will change with COVID subsides? I see government threshold capacities, occupancy monitor before less less top, top of mind. Yeah, that's a fantastic question. And so, what I would say is. Um, our application, the applications uh, for density as it pertains to COVID um, have been, uh, it's, it's mainly just a new application of our real-time data. Pardon me. Um, uh, so the, the use cases following, you know, following COVID, many of our corporate clients in the, in the office, you know, corporate office world um, don't know what the post-COVID office will look like. So there are a couple trends, right? One is you know, for companies that for a long time said, no, we can't support work from home or remote work. You know, they've kind of been doing it for a few months. They might be saying, well, we actually can. So what percentage of our workforce not is not coming back into the office? If it's 20 or 30 percent, you know, the, the, the parallel set of tasks will be, well, we need to divest from our real estate holdings or the, our leases or owned buildings. Um, and so density can play a key role in understanding how your space is actually being used to unlock those savings. Um, for companies that are growing and will continue to grow, uh, understanding space requirements for new leases, um, you know, being able to reduce the square footage you will actually need by, you know, anywhere from like two to 10% is pretty substantial when you look at the, the total savings. Um, and then we have a few other applications, you know, I mentioned tailgating that continues to be front of mind for folks. Um, and then in the future, we, you know, we density will be launching a, additional products to help uh, companies understand how their space is used to either improve operational uh, uh, operational expenses. So um, saving money in terms of how you operate your space or providing a more convenient kind of uh, experience for your customers or employees. Um, but that's a really, really good question. And we talk often about that um, in the retail environment. I could keep going. Sorry. Uh, in, the, in the retail environment, um, you know, setting alerts based on the number of people coming in to, uh, to a store and opening up cash registers to improve that customer experience and reduce, reduce expense. That's something that we can support. Um, so there's a lot of reasons why people are installing today. And there's a lot of reasons why people are, are intending to keep that system post COVID. Um, another question from chat, uh, can they be set up wireless? Yeah, so the sensor does have wireless capabilities. There are a couple caveats. Um, one, the sensor still needs power, meaning in many cases, it's still more cost effective to run a Cat6 or Cat5 cable uh, and just run it off PoE. 
which combines both power and connectivity, uh, especially at scale, our recommendation is that you use the PoE capability. That's what it's designed for. You know, it's designed to be part of your standard IT infrastructure. Um, the security of the device is very high. You know, we work with some of the most rigorous names in the country or the world rather for that matter from a data security standpoint. So uh, recommendation is use PoE, but you can configure it wirelessly. Uh, one other just product uh, specification, we currently only support 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, we don't currently support five gigahertz in terms of Wi-Fi, but we do support it. Um, another question, how many days of data can we look back in on the analytics for the report section? Fantastic question. So uh, for the duration of your service. And so the moment you start, uh, you start with density is the moment you start generating data. Um, there are some predictive capabilities of the platform, which we didn't touch on, uh, but that data set, you know, the longer you've had density installed, the more data it has and the, the stronger those predictive, uh, those pred predictive capabilities become. So uh, really good questions. Uh, I think that's the end of them. Again, I uh, really want to thank everyone for spending some time with us uh, here at my kitchen table and uh, hope everyone uh, out there is staying safe and being well. Um, and uh, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to myself. Uh, I'm just Adam at density.io. Would love to hear from you and um, we'd love to share more. So thanks all, appreciate your time.